Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial 10 Introduction to Lathe Manufacturing. This tutorial will help us understand everything relevant to the manufacturing of revolution part. We're going to detail that and we're going to see how we are going to manufacture the part. Let's go ahead and get started. Mechanical design, part design. First of all, let's talk terminology. We are going to call the first part our billet. The billet is the starting part. This is from which the manufacturing is going to take place. So, and I'm going to reset my Katia, customize so that you can have the icons in the same way that I have them. Restore all content and restore position. Perfect. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to hide the XY plane and the YZ plane. The reason we do that is to match the reality of lathe manufacturing. In lathe, you are manufacturing a profile, and then the revolution of the lathe is what creates a 3D. And the convention is, we always design in the Z axis plane, where Z is the axis, the concentric axis, and X is the radial. You will be seeing that in a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and click to create references. So we are going to create a geometrical set. And this is where we're going to put our starting point, our approach point, and these different elements. So let's go ahead and get started. And as we're doing it, we will explain uh, what's going on. First of all, let's start with a point. So for reference elements, we need the reference toolbar. I can close this one. I'm not going to be using it. This one will be useful a little bit later. And here's the reference element. For some reason, I didn't see it. So we're going to create the point 0, 0, 0. That's going to be our origin. Let's make sure that we name things as they are. So this is our programming origin. We can just call it programming, but programming origin is fair enough. We're going to create the z-axis, so point direction. We're going to do it from this point, and we're going to do it along the z-component. And let's go ahead and uh, do it, give it some distance. And this is going to be, I'm pressing Alt-Enter to go to properties, or you can do right-click properties. So it's a force of habit. We're going to call this the z-axis. So now we can a little bit position ourselves in a normal to this plane. And we can actually position it in where z is along this orientation. You can always right click and click edit. And you can change the location however you want if you want to do it from here. So there is this different um, element that you can actually use. All right, so just want to orient this a little bit more. Okay, fair enough for now. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and continue. After the z-axis, we're going to create a point and we're going to call that the Tourette origin. So, so we're going to have to create some points. Uh, we're going to create like a retract point, a machine origin, um, Tourette origin, and I'm going to explain what they are. This point in here is going to be my uh, zero, zero point. And let's create the second point with X100 and Z100. And we are going to call this tool retract approach as as we are moving forward in the tutorial these things will make sense and i will explain them now we're going to create another point and we are going so let's make sure we select the programming origin first or else it will create it based on the other one and we are going to do a x200 
and a Z500 and we are going to call this to red origin we could have called it uh, home as well or magazine but to red origin and finally we're gonna do a machine origin so from the default from the origin we're going to do a zero zero minus 200 all right perfect and let's make this axis a little bit longer just so that perfect let's go ahead and zoom all in let's see if there is a, a view that would give me what i want front view definitely not let's see let's try them all so not front and not back let's see left not left so obviously it's not going to be the right and let's try top view no and bottom view well none of them is useful so i'm going to click on this and click on the xy plane and i wish i can rotate this 180 to the other side well i can do this all right i'm going to stop playing around and create the shape that we want and i'm gonna put things like this all right perfect let's explain a couple of things but first let me save the part going to desktop we're going to create a folder we're going to call this lathe this is our lace manufacturing and it's very important to create a parts folder a product an assembly folder that's that's, that's the product the assembly a process folder and a code and let's call it nc code of course we should can have drafts and all of the others gonna click parts and we're gonna save it in parts this one we're gonna call it machine origin now let's go ahead and color the things to explain them i'm gonna start with this one this is gonna be in green and we are going to make it solid the reason why this is in green because every single point every single x and y will be programmed with respect to this point and you will see that shortly this axis we are going to give it a dashed axis and we're going to make it brownish a little bit so that it just shows us the center of the machine and that is enough the tool retract approach point is also going to be green but a lighter green this is going to be our point of safety this is where we go and come back to continue another manufacturing operation now if we need to change a tool we have to go all the way to the magazine origin or to the turret origin and we are going to color that in orange to make sure that this is where we go back and the machine origin this is the point between the three chuck joe this is the point that you should not get close to and this means like you're hitting the machine so this is a little bit the part that we have these are the references and now let's go ahead and start creating our uh, part so very important to define the part body we're gonna click a sketch and we're gonna go into the XY plane so let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit how it's supposed to be this is the z-axis we always program with respect to this so let's create a profile of 20 by 200 so we're going to start from here we're gonna go 20 so a lot of time I create things then I put constraints let's go ahead and try to click on the tab put 20 put 0 and well this should be going up so let's go ahead and try 180 there we go no actually it should not be going 180 
All right. Let's see the ticket. Okay. I'm going to do it as I'm used to do it. Profile. Click here. Click here. And double click here. And then I'm going to put dimensions. This is going to be 20 and this is going to be 200. As simple as this. So this is what's sufficient for design in revolution parts because you're going to put the axis in here and once you go out and you use that sketch with the revolve it's going to automatically create your 3d and the concept of manufacturing is the same the concept of manufacturing is identical lathe manufacturing you only program x and z you don't have to program the part itself so we're going to, we're, you don't have to program in 3D. We're going to apply some transparency. You will see why is that important in a couple of seconds. And then this line, we're going to put this one as the starting line. And we're going to give it some thickness. Here we go. File, save all, yes. Why we started with the billet? Because it's very very important to file save as from the billet and change it to your part name and then use this one as your boundaries you're gonna see what i mean so let's properties i don't know what i clicked before and then we're gonna make sure that when we rename a part we call it in here as well so file save now look what i'm gonna be doing I'm going to double click on my sketch. So this is my sketch and we can rotate if we want and zoom. So I'm going to select these edges and make them as construction element. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw my part within the boundary of my bullet. Because lathe manufacturing, you are removing the material. So your part cannot be something that goes beyond that boundary. It's not logical. If your part goes without that boundary, this means you have some additive manufacturing part. Let's go ahead and take a look into what is what are the dimensions of my design. So I'm looking into this. I have a 10 by 10 and then it moves for a 20 then goes up for 70 80 and then it goes down all right let's go ahead and do this so profile we're gonna start from a distance of 10 of course obviously we're going to put constraint eventually then we go up a little bit we move back a little bit it goes up till the boundary it go a little bit in here and then it double click here now we're going to put the, the constraints. So from here to here, we're gonna have a value of 10. This one is a value of 10. This one is a value of 20. Now observe this one. We have a distance of 70 that is along the Z axis. So you're going to right click on the mouse and say horizontal measure, or sorry, vertical measure so that you have this vertical measure. And then this one, and now we have an ISO constraint sketched. So now we put the values that we have. This is 10, this is 20, this is 70, and finally this is 80. So our final part is within the boundary of my billet. As soon as I hit the sketch out, it's gonna create my part. Now we're going to change the color. We're going to do the part in green. I have this habit. I always do the part in green and the billet in blue. This is just a preference. We don't need transparency for this one. Let's do the darkest green. And then, okay. And then for the sketch, which is the other property, we are going to pick 
just another color and we're all good file save all so now we have the part prepared and the billet prepared now we start with the manufacturing assembly so we go to assembly properties we have to name things always make sure to name things the right way capital p r d r h and we're going to call this lathe v01 insert existing component remember to click on the product name so that it opens it up for you and we have our parts and we're going to save our product within the folder under products make sure you use a proper structure because if you don't do it you will not be able to send me a lot of times i receive files where the product can't find the parts this is because the structure was not healthy how they were positioned so now looking into what we have we can see how awesome it is that we have prepared things the right way we have this is the billet this is where we have material this is what we need to remove and we need now to make sure that we create so you never fail by doing the design the right way like it, it comes automatically assembled but still I like to put the constraints so that there is no ends, no ifs, no buts. And then this point, oops, I don't want you to come. And then, then this point and this point here, they have to be coincidence. I need to stop this from giving me this option. Did I do it? Let's press Ctrl U to see. Well, I did it and I did not notice that I did it. Finally, we're going to make sure that we put an angle constraint between this one and this one and make sure it is zero and we keep it at zero. Control U and I will hide the constraints. We don't need to see them. And actually, even within the part itself, I'm going to hide the reference element. We just need them one time. And here we are. Our manufacturing assembly. Our machine is going to bring the tool to this point. Then it's going to come and it's going to start removing these elements. It's going to cut off in the end. So this is going to be our lathe manufacturing. Save all. We're going to save. Now that we're done with our manufacturing assembly, we are going to start with our actual manufacturing. We're going to click start. Machining. Lathe machining. And it's going to open a process for us. We're going to save that file, save as, and go to the folder process that we created. And capital PRC for process, RH, lathe V01. And here we are. I always like to position it. So you see, because we've been doing things right, you can already see the reference for manufacturing Z and X in the right manner. So doing things the the right way helps a lot let's go ahead and start for the creation of our manufacturing program it's very important to know that you always have to start your manufacturing with a roughing operation but before we do that we need to define our manufacturing and this is where we do it let's define the machine it is a lathe so it is an horizontal lathe in here, you can define different elements such as spindle speed, center point, the turret where it's located. If you have a tooling catalog, you can specify it in here. If you want to emulate, a certain, like let's say post processor, you can, you know, call it whatever like it's important. Like in here, let's go ahead and say we have a lathe or senate lathe. It doesn't really matter. We're not really connected to a machine. If you wanted to create apt file apt stand for automated programmable tool this was the language that then moved to g code so now we're going to click ok we define the machine the reference although it's right i'm going to come just to show it to you once again so let's say we're going to go ahead and select the center this is going to be we can come and we can click on our programming origin because we have prepared everything 
if we want to select you see you you see that the y axis is turned off because as we said in lathe there is no y we move along x and z and the rotation creates the y so if i want to click on z i can select the z axis click ok and x will automatically we can click on it it can we can do this one and we have our reference next thing is we're going to create we're going to select the part and the stock product the billet so billet stock there are so many names for it now keep in mind something if you don't select it you will not be able to simulate and a lot of people do this mistake so first of all let's select the part for simulation we are going inside the part and we're going to select the sketch so this is the part and then we're going to select the body in here so we have selected the billet and the part and all of these elements they you won't really need them if there is an issue we can come, come back to them all right so we have defined the machine now we are going to go back up i'm going to minimize all of this for now so in lathe the convention is to hide the 3d body and to leave just the 2d body so you're doing manufacturing from this one to this one and actually this helps a lot with the viewing and the different operations and sometimes you know this is this is very like useful these are the different operations that we will be playing around with lace manufacturing you have rough turning groove recess profile finishing so this tutorial is very relatively easy because we are going to start with uh, the first you always have to start with a uh, roughing operation so that's very very important let's click on roughing and then you select the manufacturing program and it opens for you the same five features you always have to select from whatever you're doing any type of manufacturing you're going to have to select the strategy so how is you're going to do it directional bi-directional uh, we're going to explain this you're going to have to select the geometry where is it that you're actually doing the manufacturing you're going to select the tooling so you have to make sure that this is the right tool for so you can click in here this like a round insert is not going to be good we're going to select a different type of insert such as diamond in a few seconds you're going to select the feed and rate and spindle most of the time i would leave these automatic and they would select them based on the material and experience and finally the approach retract which we're going to talk about let's start with the geometry you're being asked to select the part itself so this is the part and the billet the stock element so in case you do a mistake it will show us the insert we're going to select a diamond insert strategies is this element if you do this one millimeter the tool is going to do one so that we, i will show it to you we'll keep it at three for now and then we will change it so that you can see it finally approach and retract we're going to activate that we're going to use this point as the approach and we're going to retract from this point so these are the approach and retract so let's make sure they're active they're selective well we will simulate and see if something is wrong so and then at the end when you finish let's click on tool pass replay if we did everything right which very clearly in here we did it will show us an animation of this is how the tool is going to work and you can click on this video and see how you would move from the start to the final part so this is what we like we're doing a roughing operation so we're fastly removing a lot of material so i wanted to explain this depth of cut i'm gonna put this at one which means from one pass to the other it's only gonna go down one so we're gonna see a lot of additional passes and double click i don't know i should have pressed to simulate it 
here we go so you see we have much more because now we're only going from one pass to the other one millimeter instead of three millimeters and simulation this is going to create a finer scale going up and preparing this for the finishing i am going to save this as i'm going to associate the video with the machining operation and now we're going to go out it shows me this blue mark and now we are going to create a finishing operation so this is a profile finishing and make sure you click on the rough turning not on the tool if you click on the tool it will do finishing before rough which is a mistake you click on rough it will add the profile finishing under it so in here it's just asking you for the profile so we're going to select the profile that we have and so the strategy, external, internal, compensation, tool, we're going to make sure that we have this diamond insert. Usually for finishing, you have a narrower angle, but we're fine with this. Approach, retract, we're going to activate both of them. And for the approach, we're going to use this point. So now you understand these points is where the tool comes from the magazine, from the machine, comes here and then go to the part and then go back here. Let's simulate. So this is our finishing. So if we do it, I'm, I'm going to do it like one by one. Um, let's go back to the start. So, oops, going back up. All right, so let's do it one by one. So the tool is here. This is the start. It's going to come down here. It's going to move up, left, go up, come back here, and then let's go ahead and start seeing. So that's the tool. And now it's moving up then it moves along the slide and then it goes back now this is gonna be like finishing so this is the end of the roughing and now the finishing will actually do this operation so this is something very very useful so that we can actually um, see this different relationship between roughing between finishing understanding the tool approach understanding the tool retract and understanding the different options that we have in uh, manufacturing so this is this has created the part what would be left is to actually do a part of in case we wanted to do a part of there are different operations you can do a groove turning operation in here and you can actually come so we needed to tweak a little bit the geometry but that is fine so let's see if it likes this one yeah so this is what i meant we needed to tweak a little bit the geometry usually we actually um do some of the operation and actually try to uh, move the part a little bit which is fine so the last thing we want to do is go ahead and create the code so in this toolbar we have this functionality go ahead and click on generate and see code interactively we're going to select and see code so before I do that, actually, let me say all to be on the side of cautious. So click on generate interactively. You go to NC code. So it's telling me use tools option to select a post processor. A post processor is something that translates from an APT to a G code to, for your machine to understand. Most probably, I don't have access to a process post processor, but I'm gonna go ahead and verify it. So, tools, options, machining, a program. So, output. Actually, I do have access, so that's good. I'm gonna click OK, and now I can select a lathe machine so I don't know which one of these would actually work so I'm gonna pick this random one and we'll see if it works and see code 
we are going to store at the same location so we're gonna save it at the same file then we're gonna copy it and execute let's see if it works so there are seven errors so let's see what are the errors so let's make sure for all selected program I'm gonna execute again and let's go ahead and see what are these errors and uh, lathe process so most probably I don't have installation of all of so I do have an NC code let's see what this NC code is most probably I don't have um, all of the uh, files needed to generate the right G code but basically it did generate a G code I'm looking at the values so this is setup tool one this is the setup of the machine this is moving to x20 z2 uh, z.5 so we're still at x20 and then z minus 93 x20 it's going up okay so this is this is actually correct so in here what happened it is it is starting to do the roughing operation so this line is actually it's going to point x20 z2.5 and then it's moving all the way back in z so i'm going to i'm going to show you let me show you this knocks onto the machine so my pc is not set up for a post processor which is fine but let's go let me go ahead and explain to you this line of code so this is this is this is m61 this means it's calling tool one basically you can see in here it's tool one so this is fine these two lines are machine setup let's remove them as we're uh, doing along so this one so n is for the number of lines so you can actually this is just a sequencing it's telling it we are i'm at point x20 so if you remember this is 20 so x20 point something and it's going to z minus 93 if you remember my roughing was actually so let's double click on roughing so this is basically this is basically this first line in here and it's moving along and every time it's getting less in z value remember this is the z axis so it's coming less in z like all the way until it reaches a set where z only goes to like minus 10 so you can see look at z in here minus 93 the next one minus 86 minus 79 so each line you're going down with x so x 20 18 all the way till x 0 and you're going back in z so if we scroll down in here you can see x now is at 11 so it's somewhere here and it goes to z minus 31 so somewhere here and until at some point z becomes constant look at this z minus 9.5 minus 9.5 minus 9. .5. x's keep going down you see the value of x and z so this is the first one which is the, the rough turning and then you're going to have the finishing so the finishing is going to come down to zero so we should expect somewhere x zero let's see or x very very close to zero so five four three one two like x1 so this is perhaps the value and then it's gonna move all the way till z minus 10 or like approximately to the values you see that so actually it goes down to x minus one so basically it even goes less than that so that we don't have like a crest of material in here and then it will go up you see like do you see those values it's gonna go to this point which is like approximately z minus 30 x10 this is the point in here and it's going to go all the way up to that point which is um i don't know what's the value of it anymore but i mean so basically this is not bad as a g code and i don't really have a machine set up in here so this is the end of this tutorial and you can replay the whole video by clicking the last operation video and you can actually see all the different values so you can actually even click on full video and it will show it to you with the different operation the roughing and then following with the finishing and this is the part that 
we have. Thank you so much for listening to me.